I pay you back 15, I still have a dollar left. Okay. Can you so just look at number 20 when it's a fraction that equals something like that and remind me, do we times then that fraction by 4 so that it's 4m or divided or what do you do? Well, you have a divide by 4, so how would you get? <coughs> so you have a divide by 4 and you want to make it become 1, so what do you do with the 4 then? Then you multiply. So when it is divide, when you start with divide, then you do the opposite, which is multiply by four. Because when you multiply by four, the four and four cancel out. Okay. You have to just to keep practicing it, right? Remembering this: if a number is in a divide, then you multiply. When a number is a multiply, then you divide. The idea is to get to one. So you're just saying a fraction is a division, then? Yes. 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 So when you say one half. It's actually one divided by two. Okay? One half is actually say I have one pizza and I'm divided by two parts. Okay? Fraction, this line, I'm glad you said that because I assume people know, but that's good to know. The divide is like a, the, the line is like a divide. Fractions are all divisions, basically. Two divided by three is really two thirds, which is two, two parts I'm going to split into three. Right? Two thirds means that I have two parts, but then somehow I'm going to split into three parts. Right? So nobody get the whole thing. Everybody get two thirds of it, or uh, the, the two two thirds will be that. So 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 the idea of two thirds is actually two divided by three. Okay. Okay. Next section. Oh, wrong, wrong packet. Is this helpful to go through like that? Okay, one step. How about one step equation with fraction? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Is there one that you guys want me to do? They kind of look like, ooh, crazy. Yes. <laughs> they look a little crazy. Mm -hmm. The first one? <laughs> you want to just try the first one just to get, uh, get, get, uh, get the thinking? This is still balanced. Just because they are fractions, we don't have to be scared of them, okay? Let's go, let's do the number one. Five and a half plus P equals to six. Okay. We are isolating P, so already in my mind, I need to get to here, right? I want to go from here to here. So what do I do, what do I do to make it into P equals to something? Negative five and a half. Yes. So I would negative five and a half plus five and a half because I'm going to get to zero plus p equals to six. Did I I subtract? I'm going to always like make sure I subtract. I'm going to make sure I, I do the right thing here. Right? These two have to be equal both sides. Whatever I do on one side, I do the other side. This cancels out, right? This is zero plus p. So what is six minus five and a half? Think about money, six dollars, and then I'm gonna buy something that costs me five and a half dollars. Which is or in fraction? I did it logically again. Okay. Now you could do it the long way. You could do it the long way, but when fractions are this simple. I like to convert it into something I know. Mm -hmm. I have six dollars and I want to subtract five, five and a half dollars. Why well, I got half dollars left? Does that make sense? No. Huh? How do I get that? How do I get that? Oh, you subtract the six minus five. Right. Well, be careful because sometimes you always think that that's what you do. I just want you to think logically. If I have six dollars and I spend something that is five and a half dollars, right? Right? Now, what about this? I can see what you guys are thinking. Oh, I always just subtract the two big numbers. What if I have this? Six, um, <coughs> what if I have the other way around? I'm gonna do five minus six and a half. Oh, what is that? Think of money again. So this is a plus. One and a half. Okay, so 
somebody say one minute and a half? Yeah. Another answer? Any, any other answers? So I have six and a half dollars. Okay. And then I spend five of it. How much do I have left? I started with six and a half dollars. I spent five. Oh, actually, I owe six and a half dollars. Right? I owe six and a half, I'm sorry. I owe six and a half dollars. And now I got five dollars for doing, I don't know, doing something. So how much do I still owe somebody? The logic is really complicated. <laughs> yeah. Normally, don't operate my head. I know. Right, right, because you want to do the formula right away. I always want to go fractions. Yes, yes. But if you think about it, you do this every day. Yes. You do this every day. When you have money, you are always thinking about. So how much money do I have left? Right. Uh, so you are just saying out loud in your head. If I have five dollars and I spend something that is six and a half. If I put it on a credit card, it means I actually still owe a dollar, a, a dollar and a half, right? If you can make it into logic, math is not that scary anymore. You're not always mechanically doing something. It actually has meaning. It actually has meaning. Okay. Yes. Okay. What if you don't want to use logic? Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't really. Cause I'm trying to do. Okay, forget logic. I'm trying to do the. I know. Same thing. I know. Yeah, just, just I and yeah. But guess what, though? Uh, I will. I will give you the other way. But I'm trying to encourage you. Yes, I like to do logic. logic. Guess what? Easier. Yes. Because you don't have to think about like what I have to remember, right? So let's say you don't know how to do that, right? Mathematically, what would I do? All right, let's say plus one. No. So I got to be able to subtract things that are the same pieces. It's what I talked about the last few times. Like uh, if you have, if you have pizza, I class more morning. If you have to subtract two things that are not the same at the bottom, it's kind of hard to subtract. So what I want to do is to think about, this is 5 over 1 minus 6 and a half, right? Yeah. But then I need to make the bottom the same. So what is another way of saying it? This is, this is 2. If you want to do, do the math part, it's 6 times, 2 times 6 is what? 12. 12 plus 1, 13. And 5 is, if I put 2 at the bottom, what is the top number? 10. 10. All right? So you have, and twos are like, uh, what? not the quarters, what is the half dollars, right? You can think of half dollars, right? So I have 10 half dollars, and then I spend something that requires me to pay 13 half dollars. How many half dollars do I have left? I actually owe somebody. How did you get to 10? Five, five over one is the same as 10 over two. Oh, I see. Right? Okay. Right? I, in this case, I'm not actually simplifying. I'm actually making it bigger because I want to match the bottom. Remember we talked about how, oh, yeah. if you talk about the two here, in order to, to, to add the top, you have to have the bottom the same. So if I say two here and two here, then my top number cannot be a five. Because again, I cannot change the value. I just change the representation. Mm -hmm. That's representation again. Mm -hmm. The five dollars is the same as 10 half dollars. If I give you both those things, they are exactly the same value. One of them is one piece of paper or five one dollar. The other one is like five big coins or ten big coins, right? They are exactly the same value. All I did is to change it. It's like you making change. I did. I said this earlier. When, when we go to, uh, when we want to pay tips and somebody say, oh, we owe this dinner, uh, everybody have to pay thirteen dollars. And we kind of go, well, uh, I have 20, I need some change. So then the person will go, let me take my $20 and break it apart, right? And then we start like, oh, give me this bag up. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're changing the five into half dollars so that you can then say, well, if I have 10 and I spend 13, I actually owe, right? I actually owe three half dollars. What is another way of thinking of three half dollars? A dollar and a half. Again, math is not just mechanical. It actually may have meaning. No matter how I do it, it should be the same answer. Right? 
Let's say a kid say, I don't know how to count this way, but I know how to count half dollars. They can do it this way. I still get the same answer. Okay. Yes? So number three oh, is negative three-fourths B mm -hmm. equals two. Yep. So in my head, I put plus three-fourths on both sides, and then I get B equals two and three-quarters. But the answer is... Okay, that's a good one, because you have a negative, negative and you have two and two-thirds, which yep. I totally don't get. Can someone uh, maybe talk this through? So this is number three, right? Negative three-quarter mm -hmm. times B. That's where you have to think about it. This is a multiply by B. Not an add, not a subtract. Right? So you have to look at this as a whole thing. Okay? Because what you just did was more like this. 3 quarter plus B equals to 2. Right. Right. But that's a plus. Gotcha. Then you want to subtract this. Or add this because then you get rid of it. This is a multiply. So then what do I have to do? I'm going to multiply 3 over, I'm going to flip it. Right? Oh, no, the other way, sorry. 4 over 3. See that? Because 3 and 3 will go away, 4 and 4 will go away. And then I have to multiply on both sides. I'm going to stop this and make sure people got that. Oh, I don't want to erase that because that's very important here. Could you explain the logic? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I think I need that. Actually. Yeah. So remember, let's start over here. I can do it. So this is where math is. Sometimes the first time you do it, you have to do it like step by step. When you do several times, you're like, oh, wait, I can do it this way. So let's say that we talk about what we did before. We know that the answer has to be B equals to something, right? We know that. We, know, we want to get to B. There is a three that I need to get rid of, and there's a four I need to get rid of, okay? So three is on the top. So what do I do to make sure that it becomes one? Remember, if, the, if, if there's a number that is a multiply, I need to do a divide to make it into one. So what do I do to get rid of three? Divide by three, right? Divide by three. So if I do that on both sides, I have gotten rid of 3. So then the next step is the 3 goes away. I have negative 1 4. Oops. B is a times, it's a times, equals to 2 thirds. Let me stop right there first. Does everybody see that? I'm going to get rid of it one step at a time. If it is a multiply, I'm going to divide so that it's a 1. Okay, I have a negative 3. Now I could also have done negative one third, right? I could have done that, but it doesn't matter. Eventually you'll get it. You could also say negative one third, third then your negative goes away. So now that I got rid of three, okay? So three and three goes away. Because three divided by three equals to one. Three divided by three equals to one. Right. What else do I have to get rid of? Four. The four. four. So the 4 is at the bottom, which means it is a divide. So how do I get rid of 4 then? Times 4. Times 4. Because it's at the bottom, so I'm going to multiply times 4. So what I, but that's the negative, so I don't like negative, so I like to get rid of it. So I'm going to go times 4 over 1. So when you times 4, it's the same as 4 over 1. Okay? So then I have to do it on both sides, times 4 over 1. So now, I got rid of 4, right? I got B now, because there is no negative anything. It's a positive, negative and that is a positive. I got rid of the 3, now I got rid of the 4. So now B is equals to, now what do I do with this? What do I do with this? That's a 2 third times a negative 4 over 1. When you have two numbers that you need to multiply, what do you do to the top and to the bottom? Yeah. So, well, wait, you know, what do you multiply that do? You just multiply the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. right? So 2 times 4, eight. 8. But because, and then 3 times 1, and the whole thing is a negative because there's a plus, and there's a negative. So when you multiply a number that is a plus and multiply a number that is a negative, you get a negative. 
But does everybody see that this is the same as, I can write it this way, 2 times 4 over 3 times 1. When you have fractions that you multiply, you could actually write all the numbers at the top and write all the numbers at the bottom. That only applies when you're multiplying. That's a little puzzle. Load. This is very important part because you've got to understand that that when you multiply fractions, you're multiplying all the numbers at the top and you're multiplying all the numbers at the bottom. And then you've got to figure out, is it a plus, plus or minus? If you have more plus than minus, okay, uh, you will get a minus. No, actually, yeah, you'll get a minus. When you have plus and minus, no, that's not true either. When, when the minus is even, then the, it becomes a plus. Right? Negative and negative become a plus. So let me do something here. The puzzle look is like when I have half times three quarter times um, say four seven. Okay. You literally can multiply this the top and the bottom. Okay, so it's one times three times four over two times four times seven. But again, math is sometimes one to make it easy. What else can I do before I multiply everything? I don't like big numbers, so I like small numbers. Can I, can I do this? You can cross, but there's a reason you can do it. Remember, when you multiply, it doesn't matter the order. So I could actually put the seven. I can actually do that, right? Like I flip it around, it's the same, I 